were considering in our last study how faith is all important. <coughs> Without faith, it is impossible to please God. And many, very often, a lot of our prayers are not answered because there's no faith. The Bible says you do not have because you do not ask. You ask and you do not receive because either you ask with wrong motives or you don't have faith. So, I want to tell you a little bit about how we can have communion with God. Or fellowship with God. This is a New Testament privilege. When we get to heaven, we're going to have fellowship with God continuously all the time. Even the angels do not have fellowship with God. Because they are not made in God's image. The most wonderful honor and privilege God has given man is to fellowship with him. And uh, we don't value it enough. We can understand how important fellowship with God was for Jesus. No, fellowship, how important fellowship with God was for Jesus. Because we see that particularly from one incident. In the Garden of Gethsemane, Jesus prayed, saying, Please don't let me drink this cup. I don't want to drink it. He was praying as a man. But as a perfect man. What was that cup? For many years, I never understood what that cup was. And my guess is that most of you don't understand what that cup was either. What was it that Jesus did not want? Was he afraid of dying? There are so many hundreds of Christian martyrs throughout the centuries who have never been afraid of dying for Christ. People tortured for 10, 12 years in prison, they won't deny Christ. The second, second century, when they were thrown to the lions, they would go singing into, as they were being eaten by the lion. When they were burned by the fire for, the, for their faith, they sang in the midst of the fire. But today's Christians are cowards. So many little things we'll compromise. In the office, we'll be afraid to acknowledge we are Christians because we may not get a promotion, we may not get an increment. But the early Christians were not like that. How can we believe Jesus was afraid of God dying on the cross? He loved us so much that he would have been willing to die a thousand times on Calvary for our sins. 
ఆయన మనల్ని ఎంతగా ప్రేమించారంటే మన కొరకు వెయ్యి సార్లు కళారుసులపై మరణించడానికి కూడా ఆయన సిద్ధమై ఉన్నారు సో వాట్ వాస్ ద కప్ హి వాస్ ప్రేయింగ్ డోంట్ లెట్ దిస్ హ్యాపెన్ టు మీ అటువంటిప్పుడు ఆయన టేక్ ఇట్ అవే ఆయన నాకు ఇది జరగకుండా చేయి ఈయొక్క గిన్నెలోంది నాకు ఇది తీసివే తండ్రి అని ప్రార్థించింది ఏంటి దట్ కప్ వాస్ ద బ్రేక్ ఆఫ్ ఫెలోషిప్ విత్ ద ఫాదర్ దట్ హి వుడ్ ఎక్స్‌పీరియన్స్ ఫర్ 3 అవర్స్ ఆన్ ద క్రాస్ ఆ యొక్క గిన్నెలోంది ఏంటంటే ఆ మూడు గంటల పాటు తండ్రితో ఉన్న సహవాసం అది తీసివేయబడుతుంది తెగిపోతుంది అనేటువంటి ఆ భయం ఆ యొక్క గిన్నెలోని నాట్ ద ఫిజికల్ పెయిన్ అండ్ డెత్ అది శారీరకమైనటువంటి ఆ యొక్క బాధ కాదు you know the roman soldiers because they were little merciful they would give a little uh, myrrh like an anesthetic to all the crucified people so that they don't feel the pain when they are hanging on the cross ఆ రోమ సైనికులు కొంచెం కనికరం కలిగి ఆ సులుపై మాణించే వారు పడే బాధల నుండి కొద్దిగా వారు ఉపశమనం పొందడానికి ఒక చిరకాలని ముంచి ఇవ్వడానికి ప్రయత్నించారు so they would suck that and be a little drowsy they won't feel the pain ఆ చిరకాలోది వాళ్ళు ఏదో కొద్దిగా చప్పరించినప్పుడు వాళ్ళ ఒకదైన మొత్తు పొంది ఆ యొక్క బాధ కొద్దిగా సైనికలకి read in the beginning they offered it to jesus and jesus said no i won't take it ఆ యొక్క ప్రారంభంలో రోమ సైనికులు ప్రభు వారికి కూడా అదే ఇవ్వబోయారు but at the end of 6 hours when they offered it to him he took it i think 6 gantala ayipoyin tarvata vaadu ichinappudu daani teesthunnaru why didn't he take it at the beginning i think aina enduku adi prarambhamlo teesukole see we don't understand how jesus lived aa aina elaga jeevinchara anedi manu abbadhi he lived in moment by moment fellowship with the father for every little thing aina prathi kshanam kuda prathi chinna vishayani kuda devulito aika sambandham kaligi he was so much in touch with the father aina tandito enta gaano sambandham kaligi jeevincha he would walk down a street aina aa vidhulo nadusinappudu and the spirit would say stop aa aatma nidu naa gan cheppinappudu look up into the tree aa chettu meedu chudu he would do that aan chesaru there is a man sitting there akkada chettu meedu oka aina kuchunu unnadu go and stay with him today and elli atharto velli atharto undu that's how he went to zacchaeus's house avidhanga aina zacchaeus intlo nu vellaru you know you and i can walk like that and nuvu nenu kuda alaga nadavachu if we are really filled with the holy spirit mana nijanga parishuddhaatma chandane kuda but god will lead us in amazing ways to people who are seeking for him aa devudu aayana nu vedugutunna varu der adbhutamaina reethilo manu teesukelu i have experienced that for 30 years 30 samsaram ayinda nanu if you have faith you can walk like jesus nee vishwasam undinatlayite yesu vale nee kuda nadavachu when he was hanging on the cross ఆయన సులు మీద వేలాడుతున్నప్పుడు they offered him this which they offered to all the crucified people వాళ్ళు సులు ఉప్పు మరణం పొందుతున్న వారందరికీ ఇచ్చినట్టుగా ఆయనకి చిరకాలో దేవు మరణం ముంచే పోయారు quick prayer father shall i take this ఆయన వెంటనే ప్రార్థించే పవే నేను తీసుకోనా spirit says no ఆత్మ చెప్పాడు వద్దు అని okay sorry that means i have to suffer the pain అయితే నేను ఈ బాధని నేను ఇంకా భరించాల్సి ఉంది అనుకున్నా you cannot afford to be drowsy on the cross సులు మీద ఆయన ఆ మత్తిగిలు ఉండడానికి ఆయన దాన్ని You can't sleep there. You have to be awake. Because there are a number of things you have to do. You have to forgive these people who are killing you. You have to provide for your mother, for her future. And most important of all, there is a man to be saved who is hanging next to you. See, what a lot was accomplished because he didn't take that anesthetic. ఆ అక్కడ మొత్తిచ్చేటటువంటి దాని ఆయన తీసుకోకపోవడం వల్ల ఎన్ని విషయాలు ఆయన నెరవేర్చారు చూడండి హి లివ్డ్ ఇన్ సచ్ సెన్సిటివిటీ టు ద ఫాదర్స్ వాయిస్ ఆయన తండ్రి యొక్క స్వరానికి అంత సునిశితంగా ఆయన ఉన్నారు హార్డ్లీ ఎనీ బిలీవర్ వాంట్స్ టు లివ్ లైక్ దట్ ఆ విశ్వాసంలో ఎవరు కూడా అంతగా వి లివ్ బై అవర్ రీజన్ అండ్ దట్స్ వై వి గో స్ట్రే సో మెనీ టైమ్స్ మనం మన సొంత ఆలోచన చెప్పన జీవిస్తుంటాం కాబట్టి మనం త్రోవ తప్పి ఆల్ ద చిల్డ్రన్ ఆఫ్ ఆడమ్ లివ్ బై దేర్ రీజన్ ఆడమ్ యొక్క సంతానం అంతా వారి సొంత ఆలోచన చెప్పన బై వాట్ దే సీ వాట్ దే హియర్ అండ్ వాట్ దే think ah varu deni chustunaro deni vintunnaro deni avalu chustunaro dani padi jeevistaru when we are filled with the holy spirit manam parishuddhaatma chetha nimbabadinaapudu it says in isaiah 11:3 ashaya grantham 11th adhyayam 3rd verse jesus did not judge by what his eyes saw aina kanti chupina batti teerpu techadu he did not judge by what his ears heard aina vinina dani batti aina teerpu techadu he judged with righteousness according to the father's voice aina tandi swaram nundi vinina dani meethina batti aina teerpu for him fellowship with the father was most important aina ku tandri tho unna sahavasam entho prathi every moment pratikshanam one small sin and the fellowship would be broken oka chinna paapam tho aika sahavasam thigipothu many of us don't think of that seriously aa vishayanni manam anta 
That's why you can have a fight with your wife and not settle it for three days. Because you're willing to break fellowship with the father for three days. It doesn't mean anything to you. But for Jesus, he couldn't break fellowship with the father even for one second. Because then he would not complete the father's will. There was a work that he had to do in 33 and a half years. If he wasted even five minutes, then he won't finish the father's will. I know from the time I was converted, God had a plan for my life. Just, just like for all of you. And if I spend some of those years running after money, I will not be able to finish what God wants me to do. Even as a preacher, if I am interested in money, God will not give me his word to speak what I am supposed to speak. If I stand up in a pulpit and I try to please men, God will not support me anymore. That's the problem with a lot of preachers today. They are interested in money, they are interested in popularity. And they are interested in crowds. Jesus was interested in none of these things. Fellowship with the Father was the only thing. And so when in Gethsemane, he was thinking, now for three hours that fellowship will be broken. Why will it be broken? Because the father will forsake him. Why the father has to forsake him? He never sinned. But he was going to take our sin. He was going to take our sin, listen, as if he himself had committed it. As if he himself had committed all the sins that all the millions of people in the world did. And so the punishment for all the sins that all the millions of people have done in the world, he had to take it. And what is the punishment for sin? It's not physical death. If it is physical death, then when we die, we have paid the punishment for our sin. Then everybody who dies can go to heaven. You can say, Lord, I died. And I paid the punishment for my sin. A lot of people think that Jesus' physical death was the punishment for our sin. Physical death is not the punishment for sin. It is being forsaken by God in hell for eternity. That's the punishment for sin. Think of people suffering in hell for eternity. The fire and the worms are not the big thing. Being forsaken by God is the worst part. Those, those are all pictures God gives us, Jesus gave us of what it means to be forsaken by God. See, we are so human that if somebody says forsaken by God, we don't understand. But if he says burning in fire, burning in fire all the time, then we understand. Or if we understand being eaten by worms, 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 is that we understand. And Jesus was using these pictures to show us what it means to be forsaken by God. Hell is being forsaken by God. That is the punishment for sin. And if Jesus did not face that, then he did not take the punishment for my sin. If he was only crucified, he did not take the punishment for my sin. He had to be forsaken. And he had to face the agony of eternity. 
You say, how can anybody face the agony of eternity in three hours? I cannot face it in three hours. But one who is infinite like God, he can face eternity's suffering in three hours. He is an infinite being. I am a finite being. What I face in eternity, he can face in one second. So what Jesus suffered in three hours was the combined suffering of being in hell for eternity of millions of people. The day I understood that. When I understood that, it changed. I saw how much Jesus loved me. I saw how much Jesus loved me in Gethsemane before he went to Calvary. How many of you have seen Jesus' love for you in Gethsemane? This is how I saw it. I saw him praying there. Father, take this cup away from me. I don't want to break that fellowship that I had with you for all eternity, even for one second. You know, there are some charismatic preachers who say, many well-known preachers, that after Jesus died, he went to hell for three days. And he was tortured there by the demons. You know what I think of that? Absolute rubbish. They haven't studied the Bible. When he died, he went to paradise, not hell. He told the thief, I'll be with you in paradise today. He didn't go to hell. But he did face hell for three hours on the cross before he died. When he was forsaken by the Father. And the sun became dark. And the earth began to shake. Because the creator of the universe was forsaken by the Father. That's what he was afraid of. Not the physical suffering. Not the physical suffering or humiliation, nothing. But, Father, I have fellowship with you for eternity. If you want to understand what pain it was, 1 Corinthians 11 says the Father is the head of Christ. Supposing your head is wrenched off from your body. How do you feel? That's, that's how Jesus was feeling. Oh, Father, I don't want my fellowship with you to be broken. Not even for one second. You mean for three hours I won't have fellowship with you? As I said, we can't understand that. Because we sin sometimes and don't have fellowship with the Father for three days. We don't confess it. For example, if you somebody hurts you and you don't forgive that person. Ten years you don't forgive him. Ten years you have no fellowship with the Father and it doesn't bother you. You go to church, you speak in tongues, you think you have fellowship, you have no fellowship. You cannot have fellowship with the Father if you don't forgive somebody. If you hurt your wife with some one word and you don't apologize immediately, until you apologize, you have no fellowship with the Father. Whether one hour, one day, three days, one week, whatever it is, there's no fellowship with the Father. You, you may be a preacher preaching, but you have no fellowship with the Father. Christians are so blind. 
You don't understand what fellowship with the Father is. One sin is enough to break fellowship with the Father. That's why it's important to confess sin immediately. Like, if you get a thorn in your foot, you take it out immediately. You don't wait till the end of the day. Jesus valued fellowship with the Father. I can imagine the Father and Jesus having a conversation in Gethsemane for one hour they were talking. He doesn't tell us what they were talking. But I think I've understood. Father, do I have to break fellowship with you? And the Father says, no, you don't have to break fellowship with me. I, I don't have to forsake you. You have never sinned. You can come straight from Gethsemane up to heaven. You can ascend straight away. I was thinking of myself now. And Jesus is praying, thinking of me. And the Father tells him, but Zach Kunin will go to hell. And Jesus says, Zach Kunin will go to hell. Okay, Father. I am willing to suffer. I will go to the cross. I will break. I, you can forsake me. I don't want Zach Kunin to go to hell. The first day God revealed that to me about 15, 20 years ago. 15, 20 years ago when I got understood this. I really wept. I said, Lord, I never knew how much you love me. I never knew you loved me so much. All my life I only thought of the physical suffering. But that you were willing to experience hell for me on the cross. You have opened my eyes. Now I know how much you love me. All because of my sin. All because of my sin. As if there was no other sin in the world. As if there were no other sinners in the world. All the others are good people, only I am the sinner. And for me, you went to the cross. Lord, I, I shall hate sin from today. With all my heart, I shall hate sin in words. Sin in thoughts. Sin in my deeds. Sin in my wrong attitudes to people. Sin in an unforgiving attitude to others. I shall hate it. With all my heart, I shall seek to be free from sin. Because today I have understood what a price you paid for my sin. I shall not, from my part, I shall not break fellowship with any one of your children. They may break fellowship with me, I can't do anything about it. But I shall love my enemies. I shall bless everybody who curses me. I shall do good to everybody who does evil to me. I shall not sin. You take that attitude and you will get victory over sin very quickly. When the creator of the universe hung upon the cross, he who could bear the whole universe on his shoulders so easily, that was easy for him to bear the universe. But my sin, that was so heavy, he couldn't bear it. My sin was heavier than the universe for Jesus Christ.
I hope your eyes have been opened today to see what sin is. I find most believers take sin so lightly. Ah, I sinned. Okay, Lord, please forgive me. The blood of Jesus is always there. You have not understood Calvary. Calvary, you have not understood it. I pray your eyes will be open today. I think of what Peter, what Jesus told Peter. Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah. Because flesh and blood did not reveal this to you. My Father in heaven revealed it to you. As I have spoken these words, you have understood it in your head. But tomorrow you'll go and sin again. Until the Holy Spirit reveals it to your heart. Then you will hate to sin. So don't be satisfied you understood something in your heart. And if you are a preacher, you say, ah, that's a good thing, I can go and preach to other people. You preachers are the biggest sinners of all. You are only interested in getting points for your sermons, not living a godly life. You're the, the ones who lead God's people astray. Only points for your sermons instead of living a godly life. Forget your sermons. Seek to live a godly life and then God will give you words to speak to people. Hate sin. Value fellowship with the Father. That's how Jesus, how much Jesus valued fellowship with the Father. And when you don't have faith, it is like an insult to God. Supposing I'm a student in college. Or supposing my son is a student in college. And he says, calls me up, dad, saying, you got to put 5,000 rupees, school fee, college fees, into, into the, my account so that I can pay the fees. And I transfer 5,000 rupees to his account. Now I'm living in another city. And I call him up and I say, son, I have transferred 5,000 rupees into your account. I have got a verification. I have transferred 5,000 rupees into your account. And I have got a verification. And he says to me, Dad, I am not sure. I can't trust you. That will be like slapping me on my face. He can't trust me. After I've done so much for him. That is unbelief. And God says something in his word. And you say, I can't trust you. I don't believe you'll do that for me. When he says, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. Can't trust you, God. You may, you may leave me. It's like slapping him in his face. Don't think unbelief is a little weakness like a headache. Unbelief is slapping God on his face saying, I don't believe you. It's like slapping him on his face. It is like slapping him on his face. Very serious. To trust him is the way we honor him. My son says, Dad, I don't have to go to the bank to check whether the money is there or not. Your word is enough. I don't have to go to the bank and get my passbook filled up. 
Today, today I can write a check and give it in the college, college office. Without checking up in the bank whether the money is there. Because dad, your word is enough for me. What a proud father I will be. How much my son trusts me. That is how God is delighted when his children trust his word. And I'll tell you something from 50 years of my experience. There's never a word that can fail in God's promises. If he says that you can live as Jesus lived, you can live as Jesus lived. When you pray, your prayer is useless if you don't believe. One minute of prayer in faith is better than all night prayer meeting without faith. But like, like I said in the last session, God's ways are not our ways. Sometimes we think of our ways better. You know, like when Jesus, we, Herod was planning to kill the baby Jesus. I would have thought like this. Ah, kill Herod. Kill Herod. Lord, kill Herod. Otherwise, he'll kill and go and kill thousand babies in uh, Bethlehem. Or at least a hundred babies. And hundred poor mothers will be crying. Isn't it better to kill one man, Herod? What do you think? Isn't that a better way? I'm sure you agree with me. You are also as clever as me. But you know what God says? My ways are not your ways. Lord, you are going to allow hundred babies to be killed? The Lord says, one day you will understand. Everything God does is right. So many things that happen in the world, I don't understand why. People ask, how can there be a God? They ask a question, how can there be a God? When little babies are born with AIDS, sickness, what sickness did they commit? What sin did they commit? I don't know, I said. I often think, why are there so many poor beggars and lepers in India begging on the streets? So difficult to help them. I remember trying to witness to a beggar once on the street. He was sitting there on the road. I first gave him plenty of money so that he would listen to me. Okay, he was very happy. I said, now let me tell you that we're sinners and Jesus died for our sins. He listened because I had given him a lot of money. And as I explained the gospel to him, I could see he was not really interested. And after some time he said, please move on. Uh, move away. Because all these other people are not getting their money who are coming by here. So I went away. So I went away. I said, Lord, this poor man, I don't blame him. He's so poor, he can only think of money. Are you only interested in the good middle class people in the city to hear the gospel? Who live in, who live in nice houses? What about these poor beggars? 
You died for them. How shall I give the gospel to them? If I go to them, they tell me to go away. They only want food and money, that's all. I don't know. I've tried. I don't know what the answer is. There are many things I don't know the answer to. But I know that God, His ways are better than my ways. One day I shall understand that His ways were perfect. That he will never punish a man unrighteously. If a man never heard about Christ, God won't punish him for not hearing about Christ. He will not punish him because that man saw false Christ being presented by Christians. For example, was he a non-Christian? He keeps on watching these Christian TV programs. And he says, I'm convinced all these Christian preachers, they're only interested in money. If this is Christ, I don't want this Christ. Do you think God will punish him for rejecting that Christ? That is not the, that's not the real Christ. The real Christ never asked anybody for money. He never asked anybody even for money for his ministry. He never said, I got tired of walking from Galilee to Jerusalem. Will you please give me money? I can buy a chariot. I can walk with Go in the chariot from now on. I'm doing ministry, brothers and sisters. Please help me to buy a horse chariot. You read anything like that in the Gospels? I mean, Judas Iscariot may have done something like that, but not Jesus. These are all followers of Judas Iscariot to ask you for money. The apostles and Jesus never asked anybody for one uh, paisa for their life or their family or their ministry. So when some non-Christian watches all these deceivers on Christian television and all these Indian preachers who are imitating the American preachers and, and, this, non, and this non-Christian says, I don't want this Christ. I reject it. If he comes to me, if that non-Christian comes to me, I say, don't worry, sir, I have also rejected that Christ. That is not the real Christ. If you want to know the real Christ, please read the Bible. All these Christians who believe these deceivers are people who haven't read the Bible. They don't know what fellowship with God is. God is absolutely righteous. He loves those beggars and those non-Christian people much more than you and I do. And if we have presented a wrong image of Christ to the non-Christians in India, and they have rejected that Christ. God won't punish them. He will punish us. For presenting a wrong image of Christ. I'm scared of that. I say, Lord, I want to present a proper image of Christ to my fellow countrymen in India. See, most of us, we don't understand what the most important thing in Christianity is. I think of some of the songs we sing. When the Spirit of the Lord is within my heart, 
I could sing as David sang. I will praise as David praised. I will clap as David clapped. Now, to tell you honestly, I'm not a follower of David. I don't care what David did. He committed adultery, I will not follow him. And he killed that woman's husband, I'm not going to follow him, no matter how much he clapped or sang or danced. I follow Jesus. These are all songs written by half-converted American people who don't know God. Dumb Indian people just imitate and follow. I'm not a musician, otherwise I'd have written a lot of songs. <laughs> but if I were writing this song, I would say it like this. When the Spirit of the Lord fills my heart, I will live as Jesus lived. I will speak as Jesus spoke. I will think as Jesus thought. I will be kind as Jesus was kind. I can write hundred verses on that. That is true Christianity. But don't expect these half-converted Americans or Indians to write that because they don't believe in that. We are living in a day of tremendous deception. And there's nobody to expose it. Have you heard people exposing all this deception and rubbish? Now, I don't blame people for singing this. I say they don't have life. But, but when you get light, you must stop singing it. See, for example, a new child comes to get kindergarten. Tells the teacher. Teacher, two plus two is three. You don't get angry with that child. He joined the kindergarten yesterday. What does he know? But after you teach him, if he still says 2 plus 2 is 3, then something is wrong. So, I have heard many people sing this song. I think all these are kindergarten children who say 2 plus 2 is 3. I won't get angry with them. <laughs> but I must tell them, listen fellas, 2 plus 2 is not 3, 2 plus 2 is 4. <laughs> when the Spirit of the Lord fills your heart, you won't just clap, you will live like Jesus lived. <laughs> to clap, you don't need the Holy Spirit, just drink some whiskey, that will make you clap. <laughs> You can sing better than David sang if you drink some alcohol. Some other spirit, not Holy Spirit. What all deception. Fellowship with God is the wonderful thing the Holy Spirit has come to give. Even in my church in CFC Bangalore, I keep on correcting the songs they sing, don't worry. <laughs> I, said, I said, brothers, can you imagine the apostle singing that song? <laughs> so many songs. Blindly Christians sing. You know why? Because they have no reverence for God. They don't, think, they don't think every word I sing, every word I say, I'm saying to my Heavenly Father. I don't blame them. I don't blame kindergarten children. I blame their useless teachers who did not teach them that 2 plus 2 was 4. 
వారికి బోధించేటువంటి రెండు రెండు నాలుగు కానీ బోధించిన అటువంటి వారి యొక్క I I blame their pastors and elders for not teaching them all these wrong things. Variyaka about these wrong things. Itwanti tappud vishyal sarije rendu variyaka pastoral gurinchi variyaka naikal gurinchi nenu cheptuna. How can we have fellowship with God? Manam ye vidhanga ayaka sahavasam kaliguntam. What is prayer? Pradhan enti. See, let me explain to you now what prayer is. Pradhan gurinchi meeku nenu vivaristhan. Prayer is like a circle. Pradhana oka vruttham lantidi. It begins with God. అది దేవునితో ప్రారంభం త్రూ ద హోలీ స్పిరిట్ దిస్ ఇస్ ద ఫస్ట్ హాఫ్ ఆఫ్ ద సర్కిల్ పుట్స్ అ బర్డెన్ ఇన్ మై హార్ట్ పరిశుద్ధాత్మ ద్వారా ఆ వృత్తంలో సగం అంతా కూడా నా హృదయంలో ఒక భారాన్ని ఇస్తుంది ప్రేయర్ ఇస్ నాట్ కంప్లీట్ ప్రార్థన పూర్తి అవలేదు ఇస్ ద ఫస్ట్ స్టెప్ అది మొదటి నిట్టు మాత్రం ఫస్ట్ హాఫ్ ఆఫ్ ద సర్కిల్ ఆ వృత్తంలో సగం మాత్రం పుట్స్ అ బర్డెన్ ఇన్ మై హార్ట్ త్రూ ద హోలీ స్పిరిట్ పరిశుద్ధాత్మ ద్వారా నా హృదయంలో ఒక భారాన్ని ఇస్తుంది కుడ్ బి ఫర్ ఎనీథింగ్ అది దేని గురించి అయినా కుడ్ బి ఫర్ స్పిరిచువల్ ఎర్త్లీ ఎనీథింగ్ అది ఆత్మీయమైన దాని గురించి కావచ్చు శారీరకమైన దాని గురించి లాగరితేని కావచ్చు ఐ ప్రే దట్ ప్రేయర్ బ్యాక్ ఇన్ ద స్పిరిట్ టు గాడ్ ఇన్ ఫేత్ అప్పుడు ఆ మిగిలిన వృత్తం ఏంటంటే ఆత్మలో తిరిగి ఆ భారాన్ని దేవుని దగ్గరికి ప్రార్థన రూపంలో నిర్వహిస్తాం అది విశ్వాసము So there's burden first. Adi prabha varam madrade from God. Devan nundi and faith back to God. Adi vishwasam dwara tirigi devan nundi veltundi. Prayer is answered. Adi putain. Prayer is answered. Prabha jawab ivvadi. Don't have to pray all night. Aatram ta pradhan chakkarle. Where there's burden Adi. and there's faith. Adi varam tho prarambham ayindi vishwasam tho mugisindi. Burden must come from God. Aa varam devan nundi vastundi. If it does not come from God is no you saying I have faith I have faith I have faith Adi devan degirundi rani baram ainatlayita na vishwasam undi vishwasam Faith for what Devan gurinchi vishwasam Please I say Nen ela unnanu Oh God Give me a full head of hair tomorrow morning Nen devan tho o prabhu rep pradhiyana kalla na tala meda vendu kalanni balavalani adigithe Lord 95% of people have hair why you didn't give me hair Ah ikkada unna 20 190 mandi ki tala meda chakkina vendu kalanna na asalu It's difficult when I walk in the sun ఆ నేను ఎండలో నడుస్తున్నా నాకు ఇబ్బందిగా ఉంది లార్డ్ ప్లీజ్ గివ్ మీ హెయిర్ బాబా నాకు ఆ తల మీద ఐ షట్ మై ఐస్ నేను కళ్ళు మూసి లార్డ్ ఇన్ జీసస్ నేమ్ జీసస్ నేమ్ జీసస్ నేమ్ ఆ యేసు నామములో యేసు నామములో యేసు ఐ ట్రస్ట్ యు ఐ ట్రస్ట్ యు ఐ ట్రస్ట్ యు నేను నిన్ను నమ్ముతున్నాను నమ్ముతున్నాను టుమారో ఐ యామ్ గోన్ టు ఫాస్ట్ నేను ఉపవాసం ఉంటాను నెక్స్ట్ డే ఐ ఓపెన్ మై ఐస్ లుక్ ఇన్ ద మిర్రర్ మర్సల్ దిన నేను నేను లేచి చూసి అద్దంలో చూస్తున్నప్పుడు little less hair than the previous <laughs> I say, Lord, what is all this prayer and fasting getting me? <laughs> I'm not asking for money. I'm not. I'm asking only for hair. <laughs> you mean you cannot even give me hair? That was not a burden from the Holy Spirit. It's just my desire. That's not my desire. You have to see whether there's a promise in the Bible. దానికి సంబంధించినటువంటి వాగ్దానం ఏదైనా ఉందా లేదా బైబిల్ అనేది మనం చూడాలి. Who says in the Bible you'll get a new house or a new car? నీ ఒక కొత్త ఇంటి గాని కొత్త కార్ గాని నీ పొందుకుంటాను బైబిల్ అనేది. This is your desire. అది మీ కోరిక. A desire planted in your heart by these deceiving preachers. ఈ ఒక మోసపూరితమైన బోధకుల ద్వారా నీ హృదయంలో నాటింపబడినటువంటి ఒక కోరిక. And for many things there is a time. అనేక విషయాలకి దానికి ఒక సమయం ఉంది. God may want to give me something but not today maybe later. ఆ దేవుడిని కొట్టి ఇవ్వాలనుకుంటున్నాడు నాకు ఒకటి ఇవ్వాలనుకుంటున్నా అది ఈ రోజు కాకపోతే తర్వాత ఎప్పుడు ఇవ్వొచ్చు. We have to wait That for God's time. దేవుని సమయం గురించి మనం వేచి చూడాలి. I believe God will give me a full head of hair. నా తల మీద పూర్తిగా వెంట్రుకలు కుమలిపించే దినం ఉంటుంది. There's a promise in Philippians 3 and verse 21. ఫిలిప్పి పత్రిక 3వ అధ్యాయ 28వ వచనంలో ఆయన వాగ్దానం ఉంది. The promise that God will give me a full head of hair. ఆది నిజంగా దేవుడు నా తల మీద పూర్తిగా వెంట్రుకలు ఇస్తాడని వాగ్దానం. All bald people read this. మార్చుల్ <laughs> అయ్య అది కూడా అంత నల్లగా ఉంటుంది ఇట్ విల్ బి లైక్ జీసస్ హెయిర్ యేసు క్రీస్తు వారి ఆయన నుండి ఐ విల్ లుక్ లైక్ అ 33 ఇయర్ ఓల్డ్ యంగ్ మ్యాన్ అప్పుడు నేను 33 సంవత్సరాల అన్న యవ్వనస్సులే నేను కనబడతా నాట్ టుమారో రేపు కాదు ఐ గాట్ టు వెయిట్ అ ఫ్యూ మోర్ టైమ్ ఇయర్స్ ఫర్ దట్ దాని కొరకు నేను మరి కొన్ని సంవత్సరాలు నేను వెయిట్ చేయాలి ఐ కాంట్ ఆస్క్ టుడే ఫర్ వాట్ గాడ్ విల్ గివ్ మీ వెన్ జీసస్ కమ్స్ 
But I can ask for today what he has promised in his word. Sin shall not rule over you. That is now, not when Jesus comes. So there must be burden and there must be faith. And faith comes by hearing the word of Christ. I must know the, I must know the word and I can claim it. God, your word says I must rejoice in the Lord always. I am not rejoicing, I am complaining so many times. But I have faith in your word. Give it to me, even if it takes 10 years, I want it. Be anxious for nothing. In everything give thanks. These are all verses in scripture. You must walk as Jesus walked. Many wonderful things. I can do it. Never be afraid. Lord, I want this life. Fill me with the Holy Spirit. I trust you to do it. See, there's a promise in scripture that Jesus will baptize you in the Holy Spirit and fire. Just go by the word of God. Don't go by all the arguments in different groups. The Baptists say there is no such thing. Pentecostals say you must speak in tongues. Just forget all of them. Just go to the word. Jesus will baptize you in the Holy Spirit and fire. Lord, I'm going to shut my eyes to all the preachers. Ears, shut my ears. And, and I want to listen to your word. Baptize me in the Holy Spirit and fire. I prayed that prayer. The Lord did it for me. I was not Baptist or Pentecostal or anything. I'm not against them, I'm not for them. I'm only against the devil. I'm not against the Hindus or Muslims or even the atheists. I'm only against the devil. I'm against sin. And I'm on the side of Jesus and the word of God. You be like that. And then you'll have faith, you'll have a burden, and you'll have faith for that. That is prayer. The second thing is thanksgiving. You know, the more we learn to thank God, the more we can have fellowship with Him. Psalm 106 says about the Old Testament faith. The Old Testament faith was after God did something, you'll believe. See this. Psalm 106. The children of Israel, they went through the Red Sea. In verse 9, then the Lord, uh, uh, He in the Red Sea, verse 10, He saved them from the hand of those who hated them. <laughs> Verse 11, in the Red Sea, the waters covered all their enemies. Verse 11, and nobody was left. No, all the enemies were defeated. Then, then, verse 12, then they believed his words. They sang his praise. That is Old Testament faith. Uh, Lord, after you kill all my enemies, then I will trust you. Then I will praise you. Praise the Lord. New Testament faith is, he sets a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You know Psalm 23. <laughs> he, the enemies are still there. But I'm not going to fight with them. The Lord says, let's sit down and have breakfast. Lord, what about those enemies? What about those enemies? Forget them. Let's have breakfast. 
He sets a table before me in the presence of my enemies. The Lord says, don't worry about any of them. I defeated all of them on Calvary. And so he anoints my head with oil. My cup runs over with joy and praise. Oh, you're so happy, Brother Zach. Uh, are all your enemies defeated? No, 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 no. They are there. But the Lord is with me. And the devil was defeated on Calvary. The devil is alive. He is still roaming around the world with all the demons. But we are not afraid of him. The Lord told me, as you were once afraid of the devil, now the devil will be afraid of you. Because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. You say, Brother Zach, is that only for you or for me also? It depends on your faith. If you believe Jesus, it's true for you. If you believe all the fear the devil puts into your heart, then it is not for you. The devil is always trying to put fear into people's hearts. Fear of this, fear of that, fear of the other thing. The little pain here. Ah, cancer. You will die six months only. All a lie. Have faith in God. God loves you. Dear brothers and sisters, learn to thank Him. Learn to thank Him for all that He has done. Lord, I praise you. I thank you for all that you have done for me. You will do more for me than I can ask or think. This is how we have fellowship with God. I have just told you a little bit, there is a lot more. But learn to start with praying in faith, thanking God in faith. That's pray. Heavenly Father, help us to live in the light of your word. Not to live by the lies of the devil. We believe we can live with the spirit of heaven right now in our life, in our home. And I pray that all of us will experience it. Learn to trust you. That by the fullness of the Spirit we can live and walk as Jesus walked. In Jesus' name. Amen.